ko te nei mātou ki a koe, he manaki tia i a mātou. Well, you have to do this. You have to be there, Siriki. Uh, yeah. hmm? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'd like everybody to join in with the guy too much, please. Ask her to talk about meditation, balancing physical, mental, and holistic health through yoga asanas. I have given in brackets the Vedantic names. When we talk about the physical aspects of ours, how we act, how we utilize our five senses, five knowledge senses. Jnanindriyas and five action senses, Karmindriyas. How we utilize this body is exactly what is meant by Karma Yoga. So when we talk about the physical aspects, we talk about Karma Yoga. And when we come to the mental aspects, it is what is known as the Jnana Yoga, the knowledge aspect. So whenever you utilize your mind, actually what you are doing is Jnana Yoga. Whatever you are trying to learn, it is nothing but Jnana Yoga. And then we come to the holistic health, what is known as the Bhakti Yoga, devotional one. And now at this particular stage, I am going against the rules. You want to de-addict yourself, but I want you to become addicted to a particular drink. Permission given? I want all of you to become addicted to drink tea instead of coffee. Why? Because the tea I am giving you is nothing but a combination of thoughts, emotions and actions. T-E-A. <laughs> so that is exactly what we mean by the Karma Yoga, Jnana Yoga and Bhakti Yoga it is nothing but a union of your thoughts, emotions, and actions. And this process of being unified is a continuous process. 
It is not a separate process. Any little act you do, even just moving your finger, needs T. <coughs> Why? Because the thought must come that you have to, and then the emotion must come. You should know where you are. You should know if you do that action, will it be misunderstood? Got the point about the emotion? If the thought is to be put into action, it should pass through emotion. When the emotion says no, the thought is off. And probably that is where the laughter helps. <laughs> Another addiction I want you to be. Don't be addicted to smile. Be addicted to laughter, a real laughter. And it is literally true that when you laugh, 90% of your psychological problems are gone. It has been completely, experimentally, scientifically verified that if you can know how to laugh, can you all laugh once for me? <laughs> ah. That's that, that sound, ha 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 ha. When that comes, don't you feel that you are already charged? You just have a feeling, be aware of it. So you had a thought and you have overcome the limitations that we should not laugh here. The emotion is on and you put it into practice. These three together, thought, emotional action is what is known as yoga. And in English we call it as holistic approach. So literally, how we are living is always a holistic approach. We live because we use our thoughts, emotions and actions. Next. Now, there are various yoga asanas. <clears throat> but many times also we forget that when you are practicing the yoga asanas, you are actually taking tea. I am using this word frequently to make you addicted to it. Now suppose there are various posts, a dean, a principal, a member of the parliament, a doctor, an engineer. Where does he sit? He sits in asana. That doesn't mean that the chair is the power. It is a symbolic of that power. You try to understand it, where these asanas will give you immediate power, immediate. When I say asana, a principle. He does not sit on a principal's chair to take a decision as a principal. Am I clear about it? He may be moving, he may be very aware, he may be seeing a movie. But wherever he is, he is always on the chair of the principal. So his asana is the principal's asana. A doctor. Always sits on the doctor's chair. Doctor's asana. Wherever he is, he need not sit in his consultation room and sit on that particular chair only and then he becomes a doctor. Even when he goes out, even to enjoy himself, on his own personal cars, he always is in that asana. I'm able to convey what I want to tell you. When you practice an asana, you are changing your attitude towards life in thought, emotions and actions. That is the real meaning of asana. So when you are practicing an asana, what are you trying to do? You are lifting your consciousness to that level what we call it as the holistic consciousness, the yoga consciousness, and you always try to remember that whenever you use the word yoga or holistic, you means a union between these three, thought, emotions and actions. That whenever you use the word yoga or holistic, you means a union between these three, thought, emotions and actions. And when you analyze yourself, 
you will always find that there is a break between your thoughts and actions. Just as doctor was telling about the race break in thoughts, the ethnic breaks in thoughts, the culture breaks in thoughts. So these breaks in thoughts can be mastered by asanas. These are the special asanas which have been shown here. The first one is the, are you able to recognize that? Cow. In yoga, cow is worshipped like anything. Whenever you talk about an avatar, especially the Krishna avatar, you just can't imagine him without the cow. It is the physical asana that is available to us. The cow is a symbol of solar rays. The rays coming from the sun are symbolized by cow. Got the point? So when you sit on that asana of Gomukha, what is happening? You are tuned to sun. And you know, scientifically also, whether you believe it in meditation or religion or anything, we believe that our life depends on sun. Is it not? The sun is the most antiseptic disease, curer. His rays are most antiseptic and much health giver. And he gives a lot of nourishment. And when you face that sun, you are sitting in this asana. You understand the meaning of asana? I am not talking about the physical posture. There is a union between the thoughts of that asana, the emotion of that asana, leading you to, to per that particular physical aspect. That is where asana helps you. When you are in those particular asanas, you are led to that particular concept of tea drinking. I just knowingly using it so many times that when you go from here, I wish that all of you will tell I heard that you should drink tea. That is what I learned in the seminar. And when you drink tea, what does it mean? In every action that you are performing, are you aware that which thought, which emotion is making you act like that? Next. You see these figures, a old lady figure. Next. A young lady figure. Be very careful about the thought power. Again, show the first picture. First picture, the old lady picture. Visualize the picture. This is the secret of all the sadhanas. What are you seeing there? You are seeing what you are seeing. Am I right about that? <laughs> and in the next one, there is a difference in age. Are you sure about it? Now, you just say, sorry, sorry. Seeing anything now? All of you got the experience of the change in the vision. Now, this is exactly where your thought process helps. There is nothing there. It is what you are seeing. That is why Parampuja Gurudev always used to say, if your mental state is changed, the physical state is changed. And this is not just is saying a statement, it is a fact. You have seen now, you have changed the age just by changing your viewpoint. And now another example like that. I will not repeat it, but show it. The rabbit, next. You see, if you see this part, it is a nose, a beak. But if you see this part, it is a rabbit. Is it not? All of you understood it? Now be aware in your life whether you are diagnosing a patient or you treating with your family or anywhere you are. It is just how you look at it 
changes the situation. You need not change the situation. You have to change your see. Drishti badle to srishti badle. And now do you think that it is just a passive, unbelievable statement or a fact? But you have to learn how to see. Next. Here also you, you have a glass and you can see two people facing each other. What is right? Both are right. It all depends in which way you look at it. And remember why I am showing all this is, this is the real asana. Asana means from which state, from which level you are seeing it. And now when you see somebody, we just see the physical body. But if you are able to see the emotional aspects and the thought aspects, what you are seeing is something, something, something different. And that something different cures every disease. Because actually if you understand what is a disease, it means you are not at ease. Is it not? You are saying always disease, 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 disease. But what is disease? You are saying that he is not at ease. And when you have the holistic approach, don't you know that everything is eased off? So when you just look at something, look, next. Now, when you see something, we have the brain and it has two aspects, the left and the right hemispheres. The left brain is positive, analytical, linear, explicit, got the point? Why I allowed you to read it is, this is exactly what we are. Is it not? We are only on the left side. Are you on the right side? No. And many times, uh, many of my friends in Andhra Pradesh and South India used to come and say that the doctors have said that your right brain is not functioning. I said, why do you worry? It is not functioning in anyone. Don't worry about it. This union is the real yoga, the union between the analytical and intuitional, inspirational, vision-making capacity. That is the total approach. You analyze something, we analyze something, analyze something. And Dr. Pranav Pandya used to say a beautiful word. You become an expert in this particular field of your activities when you know everything about nothing. <laughs> Don't you think so? When you go on to the expert levels, even in medicine, I heard a fact that really happened in Indian ambassador to Russia. His daughter came from India. Suddenly her eyes has become red. <coughs> she wanted to go to a doctor, eye doctor. She went. They were talking in Russia as he was telling it, the language problem. So nobody understood uh, what the doctor was telling. But in the end he expressed, meaning that I can't do anything to your eyes. And now she becomes scared. What is happening to my eye? Then the interpreter came and said, what he is telling is, I am a right eye doctor and you have a Problem in your left eye. You go to your left eye doctor. <laughs> Do you know what I mean by that? As you think you are becoming expertise or an expert in a particular field, you are becoming analytical, analytical, analytical to a smaller, smaller, smaller part. And what does the holistic approach say? That small part is a part of the whole. And not only of the human body, the entire cosmos is a part of ourselves. We are a part of the cosmos and the cosmos is also a part of us. And the cosmos is also a part of us. 
That is what uh, he was telling about the Pindanda and the Brahmanda. This approach, you just, you see this, you have a problem or something, you have a past and you have a future. Is it clear? A problem is there. What we are now concentrating is about the past. How did he agree? When you diagnose it, we are more concentrating on what happened, what caused it. What we say is the flashback, the analytical aspect. So when you go to the flashback, you are going to your which brain, right or left? Left. And I don't know how they named it, it is to be left. I don't know how they named it, but uh, I think nature is always right. <laughs> then what you are supposed to do? Flash forward. How you are imagining the future. And that depends on the right brain. So this is the actual, next, next slide. <clears throat> you just see the various doctors, experts in the left and brain hemisphere techniques, they said that you want to suspend the left brain activities. These are the steps you have to take. These are the scientifically, should I say, leftized, that is, they have analyzed by doing what types of activities you should perform in your daily life so that your left is suspended, your left brain activities, your analytical brain activities are suspended. And then what happens? Naturally the right brain, what I am talking about, the future, imagining the positive future automatically comes up. The first one, what is it? Anybody read it for me? You are not a, you don't want to help me in reading it? <laughs> all these, are they not similar in all religions? For all religious practices, fasting, speaking less, utilize your sleep properly, so all the religions are one, they are trying to stop your left brain and activate your positive brain, the inspiring brain, the imaginative brain. So what we take now as something spiritual, ritualistic, in all religions are nothing but a technical, holistic approach where your overused left brain is being suspended at that period of meditation. So when you are meditating, you remember this. So what do we advise? You don't think. Because whatever you think will be from the left brain. Because you are addicted to it. So this new addiction you remember. That you are thinking from the right brain. You are thinking from the right brain. That's why in Hindu religion, this left and right brain comes the left is Sita, the right is Rama, we say Sita Rama. The left is Radha, the right is Krishna. Am I clear in left and right or should I ask the brain hemisphere? Radha is the symbol of the left hemisphere. Krishna is the symbol of the right hemisphere. So whenever you chant these words with this knowledge, what is actually happening? Your nerve currents are developing. When you say Radha and Krishna chant together or Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Whenever you utilize these mantras, actually what is happening is a union, a yoga, a holistic approach where your left and brain hemispheres are coming together. And this particular form, you see, a small, mean, a small man inside us, a Vaman Avatara, a big hands and a bit smaller legs and the face comes here. This is actually what happens in our brains. Much of your top of the brain is covered by nerve 
impulses that control our hands. So when you sit in meditation, you are asked to put your hands like this. This is known as the Dhyana Mudra. And whenever, even if you now do it, will you do it? Uh, why not practice it when I am telling about it? Exactly at this point, the left major part of the brain and right major part of the brain are coming into contact. That is why this is known as mudra. Do you know what mudra means in Sanskrit? It means emotion. Emotion, thought, emotion and actions. We say abhay mudra. Will I say like this or like this? All of you understand this much? When I say this abhay mudra, what does it mean? I am going to thrash anyone? <laughs> so abhay mudra got the point. You are feeling. When you want to give somebody, don't worry, I am with you. And you want to give something? And do you know what this means? Which part of your brain hemisphere acts when this is put like this? Left or right? You must be knowing about the brain. They so when you put like this, it is the left coming in. When you put like this, it is the right coming in. So whenever you want to avoid something, <laughs> just a movement is acted. That has become the present day problem. So when you combine these two, what is exactly happening? You are giving protection as well as you are giving blessings because of the activities that have developed in your brain centers, the left center and the right center. Now, <clears throat> man must learn that he is the cosmos. First accept it in science, we call it as hypothesis. And when you put the hypothesis in practice and it works, we say it is a theory. And when you are able to utilize the theory for your practical purposes, we call it as a principle. Five minutes? You should tell me, be very honest. Because all of you must have already understood what I am trying to tell you. So, two minutes more? Hmm? Okay. <clears throat> so, David Boom and Wolf, they have said that the quantum theory in physics is nothing but the holistic theory in spiritualism. Because the quantum chemistry says that when you look at an energy, it becomes a particle. When you don't look at it, it becomes a wave. The electron, when you want to look at it, it becomes a particle. When you don't look at it, it is an energy. Similarly, just as you were telling about the cancer cure, when you don't look at it, she forgot about it, the energy descended and she was cured. So the quantum physics is nothing but the future quantum religion. And I hope all of you will become part of it. And those who are interested can be linked with Akhil Vishwa Gayatri Parivar, where you will get all these teachings and everything to get your explanations with your questions. I give you a break for tea. Okay, you remember that. Thought, emotional actions, together is holistic approach. Thank you.